It's because of Hunts Point that I am successful. You can believe in the fact that you don't have to move out of your neighborhood to live in a better one, that we can be a part of helping to make it better, and that I want to show that there are things that we can all be doing together to make it a better place to be. You know the saying, think uh, globally, act locally. Um, I actually think it should be if you think locally and you act locally, the global will be just fine. Because we are simply a, a collection of little local areas. But I do think that there does need to be, um, you know, and an acknowledgement that being local isn't all about doing what's good for just your little local area at the to the detriment of those outside of you. If we really worked hard to create the kind of, of beneficial policies that supported everyone in the community and just assumed that there was this beautiful virtuous cycle, you know, that happened when you had a great um, you know, beneficial way of doing everything, you know, from public health to, to, to waste handling to the economy, all in this lovely little cycle, then you've got some great things going on. You know, I'd been spending a lot of time on the road, and when I was asked to speak and do advisory services, they were mostly in communities that were just like my hometown, the South Bronx, you know, sort of an environmental and or economic um, sacrifice zone, so to speak. And, you know, I was really struck by a couple of things. You know, one was just that no matter where I went around the country, there was only two kinds of real estate development in poor communities. And that was either the kind that just assumed there was going to be gentrification, you know, and sooner or later the place gets better and the poor people are pushed out, or it was going to stay a poor community and thus this, the, all the goods and services and economic developments were basically the only kind of things that catered to poor communities or they were expected to see in poor communities. So highly subsidized housing, you know, corner stores or bodegas as opposed to places where you could buy like healthy and affordable produce, um, you know, uh, instead of real banking institutions, you know, payday loans or check cashing stores or pawn shops. And, and I was just like, you know what, that is possibly the most uncreative creative thing I've ever seen in my entire life and like why are we putting these little band-aids you know on our on poor communities and, and expecting things to get better and they're not and and I just realized that real estate development if properly used could be used as a tool for as a platform even for the kind of social environmental and economic transformation that we really needed to see in our own communities and so I was really interested in, in how do you harness the power of gentrification because the bottom line is you know poor people who live in poor communities like nicer things too. Like we would really like to have a decent place to get a cup of coffee. I import all my food from Manhattan. Most of it does not come from my own neighborhood because it's, believe it or not, more expensive. And obviously the, 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 the quality is not as good as you find in other places. So I'm like, you know, this doesn't make me or anybody else happy, you know, to do these, to, to know that this is what's happening. So why would we not want to see better things here? And why would we also not want to see things like economic diversity because we know that actually economic diversity having people of, of different incomes in a community actually provides a level of stability in that community that a poor community will never ever ever have I mean the only people who think that you know there's some romantic notion of, of poverty are people who've never lived in a poor community and um, those are not the people that I want building you know stuff in my community although for unfortunately they are often the people building you know projects in poor communities The Spa for Juvenile Detention Facility, it was possibly one of the most notorious um, juvie facilities on the East Coast. I mean, um, it was known as a college for criminals, actually, where um, kids that went in often came out much worse than when they went out. Um, children's Aid Advocates and, and also um, uh, prison reform advocates have been trying to close it for, for decades. My father was actually a janitor there back in the, the 60s and the 70s and and I distinctly remember him telling my mom on several occasions how he wished that our house was bigger so that he could take some of the some more of the kids in because we actually did have um, plenty of kids that um, came to our house under some particularly sad circumstances um, that spent time at Spofford. So, um, so when it was finally closed it was a really wonderful thing for the for the community at large, um, and it meant that like this huge boogeyman was kind of put to rest. But I also saw it, this huge five acre site for all of its potential possibilities, which could be used for mixed income housing and mixed use uh, commercial retail and uh, manufacturing development. And I just loved the idea that this 
really awful part of our history could be transformed into something that really could herald a new beginning for our community. The city is going to be releasing a request for proposals sometime next year, um, and which means that us and every other major and minor real estate development concern in the city and outside of it will probably buy for that. Um, it's a, one of the biggest assemblages of, of acreage in New York City for a single uh, site. So it's going to be big and huge and everyone's going to want to do it. I really believe that I can bring something to real estate development that is new and different and can create the kind of transformational change that we need, in particular in the people that are in our communities, and really create the kind of aspirational communities that are um, that allow people to be the, their best selves, and uh, and that their communities um, that they understand that they don't have to move out of their neighborhood in order to live in a better one, and that they are deserving of living in a great place. I'm Majora Carter, and you're watching Thinker.